Firstly, the answers to last week's quiz, which are as follows. Sixpence of Anusian furlong. Twice on St Bartholomew's Eve, but only in his stocking feet, and not while Captain Yates is standing in Mortimer Station. Thanks to everyone who wrote in, and the winner is Mrs Ignatius Goosebody of Stoke Pogis, who has secured herself a year's supply of remainder red to ghost DVDs, handy for plugging up all those embarrassing gaps, wherever they may be. True Rich, make the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, with a gleam in their eye and a spring in their sofa, it's round the archives. <laughs> Hello, 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 and to the show, well, 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 welcome. <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't know what came over me. Hello, I'm Andrew, and sitting opposite me is... Hello, I'm Lisa. Hello, oh, hello, Lisa, I didn't know you were here. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Round the Archives, which is our rather odd attempt at doing a podcast about archive TV. We've got uh, a huge DVD collection, and thought it was about time we got talking about it because there's an awful lot of good telly out there from hundreds of years ago which nobody seems to watch anymore well, not, not hundreds of years hundreds ago. of years oh, they, 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 they used to be yeah. very old television you know. You, you know you can't see william the conqueror i can i can see him now he's sitting opposite me with his lance out what do you what do you have a lot i don't know uh yeah, thank you anyway um what have we been watching? Well, what have you been watching today when it comes to old telly? Today, when it comes to old telly. You have been today, mostly watching. I have mostly been watching. I have been mostly watching. I have watched a little bit of Heidi High. Okay. Which BBC T2. BBC2. BBC two. Two. Hello, BBC2. Is currently BBC two showing is waving at you now. every afternoon at around 2.30. So we've got Heidi High, and that's. Yes. Yes and Minister as well? Yes when... Minister. I didn't watch Yes Minister, right. but right. it was on. Both of those have been basically from the start yes. last week, was it? Yep, yeah, in the last so... week or so. So Heidi High is now up to the first episode of Series 2. Which, oddly, we watched independently a yesterday. couple of days. Was it Was it yesterday? yesterday, yesterday oh, yes. God, yes. It seems a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and you've also been watching a thing on... Uh, Talking Pictures TV. From Southern TV from, Southern from TV. about 1976. Something like what's that. What's it called? It's called Tell Me Another. It's presented by um, a character called... Well, not a character. A person. <laughs> He's real. He is real. A person called uh, Dick Hills, who everybody seems to know, but I've never heard of. I think, didn't he write for um, Eric and Ernie? Sid and Dick, I, wasn't it? I honestly couldn't tell you. I'm going to look I'm that not up. Very good with writers on comedy people. I'm going to look that up. If you want to hold this, then, okay, uh, you, we're then going I'll to look, look it, it up. up. Yes. Are you going to look it up on the internet? On the inter interwebs. Oh, God. Careful. Yeah. Carry um, on talking. Basically, all, all, what this series involves Dick Hills, is he. It? Yes, Dick Hills. He talks to different variety people and actors, Dick. presenters, yeah. journalists. Clement Freud, slightly unfortunately. Dick Hills and Sid Green, here we go. All right, okay, let's just have a little bit of info. Richard Hills, Michael Hills, born 1926, um, and Sidney Green, informally known as Sid Green and Dick Hills, TV writers for um, quite a few things, actually. Um, they created, with Anthony Newley, The Strange World of Gurney Slade, which ah, we might right. get round to doing at some point yeah we've they, only done one episode they so wrote far. for frankie howard and roy castle and also for eric and ernie on two of a kind the their itv show in the mid 60s right there you go okay so, so that's, that's who what, he that, is that's why he knows everybody in show ah, business right, that would right. explain it then uh, basically as i said what he does is he has all these different people on his show and they they talk about various things that have happened to them in their career um today's episode was talking about the various uh theatrical lodgings that they've stayed in um, I was say, john pertwee was on a few john that i've pertwee's seen been on a few telling all the same telling stories, all the stories that, that you've seen if used, you've seen john pertwee at a convention right. 
Um, but tonight's episode had uh, Colin Crompton. Was Roy Castle? On Roy there? Castle, yeah. Clement Freud, Humphrey Littleton, uh, Jack Parnell. There's, who there's I only vaguely with, know of. There's been a few with Spike Milligan and Jack, Spike Jack Milligan Warner and Jack as well. Warner. Um, Diana Dawes. Diana Dawes. Barbara Windsor. All sorts. But the real big news at the moment is that BBC oh. are doing their celebration of comedy. They are. So they are. And they started on Sunday night, which this was the um, 28th of August, 2016, mm-hmm. with um, a reboot of Porridge mm-hmm. with Fletch's grandson, which we may cover at a later stage. Mm-hmm. But you today want but, to talk briefly about Are You Being Served? Yes, which you? is my favourite comedy series ever. Ooh. Um, That's saying quite a lot, actually. Yeah, I think it is. It's, it's well, it's my comfort comedy series. It's one of those ones, if we don't know what to watch... That's we'll, what we watch. We'll go, oh, we'll have some Are You Being Served? It then usually takes about I can half point an hour. Out, I can see it sitting on the shelves yeah, it's over there. The shelves over it's there. actually in the right order. It is in the right which order. Which is very unusual. It's the only thing in-house that's in the right order. Doctor Who's all over the place. It is. But Are You Being it's Served is actually... In the right order. Yes. Yeah. Mind you, we've seen it so, so many times that yeah. we, we were going, what should we watch? Are you being served? What episode? Oh, dear. Um, no, we've seen <laughs> that. We've seen that. Oh, God. Let's see what's going on. And it takes us about it takes 10 us minutes ages to try just and to work out which episode yeah. we've seen least, you know. <laughs> well, I don't think uh, which think one we've s- seen least. Yeah. Really? Well. Probably uh, some of the ones where they're a bit more confrontational, mm. like Mr. If it, mm. it, you know, has Mr. Humphrey's been stealing, or right. somebody has to lose their job, and who's it going to yeah. be? Well, they don't like Mr. Granger. Well, or they so. don't like Mr. Granger for some reason, yeah. 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 But, they don't like those. But, but the new episode, let's talk about that. The new right. episode. Well, what did so, you think? It, what did I think? I liked it. Yeah. I would like it to go to a series if anybody at the BBC is listening to this. There's oh. probably not anybody at the BBC listening to this, yes. but if there is, I'd like it to go to a series. Um, so I've got, well, to be honest, so they've got more Are You Being Served to Watch? Mm <laughs> hmm. But yeah, I thought it was very good. It was um, superbly done. The set was very good. Yeah. There, there were some differences. I noticed that Mr. Rumble's office now has a big window in the there, back of the set. I was going to say, there, there is a window. There is a it... window, but it's not behind him. All right. And it's not arched. Okay. Oh, well, well, well a semi Because this is after series 10, and series yeah. 10 is when you've got things like the, the episode where they've got the... The two robbers in. Yeah, yeah, but it's you, just a normal window. Yeah. It's right, not okay. arched. Okay. So it's slightly different, but that's but just a But he's just moved thing. to a new office. Yeah, yeah he's right, moved to a new office. Um, as for actors, you've got um, the estimable... Well, estimable? Estimable. estimable. <laughs> The, the the very good John Chalice. Because <laughs> you can't say right, <laughs> Hello, John Chalice, if you're listening to this, we will send you a copy, probably. Uh, playing Captain Peacock. Yes. Um, one of our friends... Didn't recognise him. Didn't recognise him. He thought, oh, that looks like... He was going, Boise. who's that man? It looks like John Chalice. No, no he, he actually said it looks like Boise. Oh, right, sorry. From Only Fools and Horses. And a little while later went, it is Boise from Only Fools but and Horses. But it was the voice, but it was not the voice being that voice, that Boise's off. voice confused him. Yeah, but it's... Um, it's a it's much closer, it's closer to, to, to the way John, John normally talks. Speaks. Uh, not quite so theatrical, maybe. Don't there's anything wrong with that? No, I can't do the voice. <laughs> and you have um, Sherry Houston as Mrs. Slocum, who pulls. She's very game faces. at pulling faces, and indeed being covered and being in covered in gunk. <laughs> um, and there's lots of mentions of her pussy. The first one comes in, in at 11, 11 minutes, minutes in, into Mrs. the episode. Oh, we better do this. So 11 minutes in, Mrs. Slocum's pussy. Yeah. Then Mr. Humphrey's I'm free. He's 17 minutes Seven, in. 17 minutes. And glass of water for Mr. Granger. He's at, around 20 minutes in. So we were, we were playing catchphrase bingo with this. Yes. You know, we didn't, we, but they're all in there. Yeah. So we've got a full house. But uh, speaking of glass of water for Mr. Granger, yes. my performance of... This whole episode is Roy Barraclough because yes. I love Mr. Granger. Mr. As a character. Granger is your favourite character. By, yeah, yeah. I, I just think he's so wonderfully grumpy, yeah. and to see Roy Barraclough recreating that was so well was, was an absolute. The way he was holding his um, his, his tape, his yeah. tape measure, absolutely bang on. I don't know how much. Roy studied that performance. But it looks like he studied it but, uh, in was, great detail. That was, that was absolutely superb. Yes. So well done to 
to Roy Barrowclough. Roy Barrowclough. Yeah, and it's a very different part to other parts we have seen in play. Yeah. Yeah. which are mostly from the 70s and the less said about them the better yeah. you were also saying um, that there were some bits where Mr Humphrey uh, not Mr Humphrey, Mr Rumbold you could actually see yes I could see the actual line being spoken by Nicholas Smith well that's good which is a good thing because yeah. Nicholas Smith obviously is no longer with us one day we will talk about Nicholas Smith in Z cars oh, which is absolutely which is wonderful a, absolutely in. worth tracking down yeah. um, but well, we'll get on to that it doesn't take that much tracking down you just sort of go to Acorn no but we we can talk about that one in a future podcast because yes. we're hoping to do some more of these yeah yes if you're going to listen to them please listen yes, to them yes 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 yes, yes, yes. anyway um, so all in all yeah, it's, it's, it's a it hit a, for you, I it think. It was a hit for me. It, um, it didn't do b- too badly in the ratings. Got just I think over just five over million. 5 million for overnight, yeah. and it's obviously going to add a bit more. Yeah. Uh, we just watched it again on iPlayer, so that's another... Little hit. Another viewer. For, yes. I don't know quite how much notice they take of iPlayer. But, but we would definitely like a series of it, because so. we feel that there's still... Um, the life in the old format, the yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's interesting, because it's like... Dad's Army, the the Dad's Army film. These characters have now reached an age where they're starting to pass into like popular folklore. Yeah, I think yeah. so. So it's like doing Doctor Who again. Yeah, or doing Shakespeare. These characters will hopefully come back. You know, I I can see people doing Dad's Army. You know, thirty years, forty years down the line, and hopefully, are you being served? Might follow that. Start to follow that same pattern. Oh, mm. didn't we? Didn't mention. Uh, mentions of Lloyd and Croft. Oh yeah, as... there's, a, there's a Miss Lloyd and Miss Croft secretaries to Mr. Rumble. Yeah, just a nod to uh... to the original uh, writers, yeah. which but... is rather nice. Um, yeah, but... it, all in all, it was a very good update. It's not a remake as such, but it's an update. And continuity works for 1988, and continuity doesn't it? Continuity works, and to be honest, it had more potential than Grace and Favour. Mm-hmm. Because Grace and Favour, although it's a continuation of the series with the same characters and the same actors... You, I think you do lose a bit you when you take with the, the act- characters out of, out that, of that confined story. location. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, um, it, it works that there's a hierarchy of... Yes, of, of who's A who. definite hierarchy mm-hmm. of... Um, mm. And there's, there's only one thing that... I'm, I'm loath to talk about things that I didn't enjoy, but there was only one thing that wasn't as strong for me and that was the character of the new Mr Grace but yeah. if you had a series you would probably grow to like him yeah. because you'll get to know him more oh one thing you pointed out was there yeah. was a very quick bit of editing between yeah. Miss Brahms and Mrs, Mrs. Slocum, Slocum which it? stood out a little bit too much because that's not quite um, the way it was shot well, I don't know but by the time you get to 1988 I don't know whether they'd start yeah but you don't shoot sitcoms yeah. like that no I won't okay, but that's just a minor thing um, that's an obviously a di- directorial choice. Mm-hmm. That's so, a good word. Um, so yeah, hoping for a, for a series. For a series. Yeah. Let's let's see how that goes. Yeah. All right, and okay. now we'll move on to another thing. Hello, and today we're joined by a very old friend of ours. <laughs> hello, hello. hello, you're very old, aren't you? Uh, Mr. Nick Goodman. We've yes. just recorded a DVD commentary yeah, have, for his yes. uh, latest film. Mm-hmm. Well, I say latest well, film; it's from 1999, yes. but we just yes. got around to doing yes. to that. But um, yeah, be... yes, Nick. Today yeah. we want to talk to you about old television. Oh, one of my favourite topics. Yeah, I know that. That's why we've got you as our first guest. <laughs> what are your earliest memories of television as a small child? I suppose you were two things, really. I suppose from the era, um, mainly the goodies, right. uh, which started when I was two. Um, I can definitely remember. Uh, being in on in uh, Newquay in 1971, playing the goodies, playing TV and playing mm. the goodies with my sister. Any specific episodes or just the goodies generally? No, as a the concept? goodies generally. I yeah. think um, I'm, I'd like to say I remember a bit of Kit and Kong and everything, but uh, no, uh, goodies generally. I think it appealed to me. Uh, they still appeals to me now, but um, it's it, yeah. That was hoping was, for a complete DVD release one day. Yeah. Most definitely, yeah. yes. Network, please, <laughs> pretty please, whichever's <laughs> on. Um, but yes, uh, the goodies. Also, top of the pops. 
Um, okay. I remember no, uh, probably 1971, 72, um, hiding behind the sofa from Alice Cooper yeah. and uh, Rod Stewart in his you're, you're a bit microphone. You're a bit more au fait with pop music than <laughs> perhaps Lisa or I am. It's, it's one of our weak areas, I have to say, pop music, in um, terms although, of what, what was in what year and things like although that. Although, to be fair to yourself, uh, I mean, to be honest, my, my knowledge starts to stumble badly during the 90s. Uh, I think um, the seventies and eighties pop yeah. probably the, the best. But I mean, you're very much a seventies kid. Oh, aren't yes, you, really? Yes, like, uh, I'm your... proud of it. Uh, yeah. Now, <laughs> as, were you an ITV kid, a BBC kid, or were you Easy? Because some households were. <laughs> I, I was Easy. <laughs> um, I do know. I remember very, very well indeed that snobbery, mm. uh, if we're allowed to call it snobbery, um, about ITV. Um, my best friend's uh, dad was a doctor of divinity and uh, he was not allowed to watch ITV. I think he managed to smuggle a space 1999 in at some point. <laughs> uh, but yes, it was very... It, 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 see, it, was it seems looked weird down. to describe it, it, it now, does. but it is yeah. true that yeah, some people didn't watch ITV. That's right. And I think it was it was definitely kind of our generation. Because I, I worked with somebody who's 10 years older than me and she, she definitely remembers she wasn't allowed to watch ITV because it was common. It was vulgar. <laughs> Um, there's a there's ITV a... wasn't on for an hour or so this morning. No, no, oh, good grief! It, it's nice to know they've still got strike. It, it's like 1979. No, it's not It was a definite it was a intended yeah, thing. Yeah, it yeah. was yeah. because it, because it's a bank holiday and we've had the Olympics. The idea was we're turning off ITV for an hour so you can go outside and play. Basically, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. a lovely idea! Yeah. But, yeah. So, so it might go on ITV Plus One as well oh. later. I don't know. No, I you can, can go out and play again yeah, if you want. <laughs> I can never remember a time when we we didn't have BBC Two till 1975. Um, I don't know. We got a, a our set predated BBC Two at the time in, until 75. So, but no, um, ITV. I can never remember any embargo on it. Um, I've. I think it were Tomorrow People and stuff like that, um, and also generally the whole that whole thing. Really, I mean, I don't I don't recall it ever being taboo, which is odd because um, I, my, my, I I can imagine my dad sort of no I don't no, I can't, no actually there were everyone it was pretty okay t um, t TV was pretty okay you know the the the, the sky's the limit I was never even though I was scared of Doctor Who at one point I was I was never forbidden to watch it. <laughs> No, um, it was always we were always sort of grown up to go our own way. Yeah. So. You, you've already sort of um, sort of preempted my next question: is, <laughs> oh, What is your favourite Tomorrow People story, and why? And who is the best Tomorrow person? <laughs> 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 um, you can be biased in any way you like about those those questions. But... Right. Um, well, in and I can. I'm. I'm. We're, we can draw a distinction between 70s and 90s tomorrow people oh, if you like that, and we're not even going to talk about the modern 21st century no, thing no no that not, the, the hip and happening badass rubbish yeah. that, 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 <laughs> roger price why <laughs> i mean why i'm i'm going to i'm i would have to say it's a tussle between secret weapon hmm. and the dirtiest business Dirtiest Business is fantastic, but it's over in a blink of an eye. That's a two, and two part of it. Yes, yeah. and it's wonderfully downbeat. Secret and, Weapons are three, isn't it? Uh, four. Four. All yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was that was me. That, that was an Anorak. Um, in in um, but uh, no, uh, Secret Weapon has the lot. It's do a wonderful villainous performance, for, but villainous but very hum human performance from uh, uh, Trevor, Trevor Bannister, mm. and and it basically is what the show is all about. Um, it does things that perhaps I mean it's a little bit um, condescending to the the, the travelling community, but you have to remember when it was made. Mm. Um, characters like that weren't getting airtime, so in the fact the fact that it was the the society was portrayed at all is is quite quite innovative. But no, it's it's serious. Um, I, I do, I do like quite like the funny ones, but you know, I, I, it's all, it, the series always works best. I, when it's I, I must admit seriously. to a soft spot for Achilles' heel. Oh but, yes, but mm. it, it's it's silly. Yes, but, but oh it's, yeah, it's um it's not embarrassing like, yeah. like I, some I, of the comedy ones are. But. Um, similarly, I must I must say I, I do like, although it's it's a bit of a lost, um, a, a bit of a missed opportunity. I do like um, Revenge of Jedekiah. All right, okay. that's that's again that's got some dark bits. Um, but you, you, it, 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 you wish there could be more Jedekiah time, and and Francis de Wolf could have been kind for all three episodes. <laughs> but um, 
I, as I say, I, I think Secret Weapon, if I had to choose between the two, because it was just got everything. Um, f- of the 90s ones, I'm going to say uh, Ramsey's Connection, Far and Away. I'm not um, even sure I've seen all the '90s ones, to be <laughs> really honest. Because yeah, Roger Price did the first. He did, and I'm, some, and then R- Grant most, Cathro. Yes. And who is it? Um, and Can't Pressman. The name. Somebody Pressman. Pressman right. Yeah, we, I mean, we'll look that up later. Don't the worry. problem with the '90s ones, I find, is they're trying to make it too much like the Avengers, mm. when they could have actually made it more like the Tomorrow People, <laughs> as it was supposed to be the Tomorrow People. <laughs> that, was, that was clue was in the title yeah. there. <laughs> um, but, I mean, they're, they're, they're quite fun. Some are better than others. Um, but I have to say that the weakest one, rather sadly, is is uh, for me is the first one, the Roger Price mm, one. Yeah, um, it's a bit generic, isn't it? The, um, the, I remember uh, reading an interview with him at the time. I was so, mildly excited when it came back. Oh yes, yeah, and, and I was excited enough to tape it. Yeah, I think I um, did. Yeah. But there's a lot of Fanny Garrett, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and you know. Oh, it, I'd have watched it, if there was more of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, yeah. <laughs> But um, okay, there wasn't enough. Uh, but I mean, I, th- I think there should have been a few more bones thrown to the uh, the us, us oldies. The old suit, remember the because um, uh, they could have pulled in a few more. You know, they, it wouldn't have hurt to have sort of had Tim or uh, referenced some of the yeah. others. Because that computer that's mm. in the spaceship, mm. I, d- I, d- I don't understand yeah. what's going on well, there. No, he, and 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 the, yeah, how anyone can understand the computer, I don't know, because it just speaks. In a wah, wah, wah. You should, you should have had more boggly, oh, boggly's. boggly-eyed Got aliens from the galactic Oh, yes. Trig. I mean, wouldn't that be good? <laughs> that if, dreadful if thing. If the chairman yeah. creature had walked straight into the the, <laughs> the origin story. And, I mean, or, get, or get the, which is it, the, the Sorsons? Or, yeah, the, 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 yes, the Sorsons. With their wobbly hands. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, you know, if, if one of them had... Well, they brought them back on audio. Big I, Finish did I those. I have that the, story. Yeah. I liked, I really liked the Big Finish re re um creation of the show i thought it was very faithful very sensibly and you know kind of it was very well done mm. i thought um i mean i i ended up not being able to afford <laughs> all of them but um i did actually buy them for some considerable yeah. time and i thought it was a good reinvention of the sh- of the show favorite tomorrow person is the one oh, favorite tomorrow person yeah uh. I thought Tyso had a lot of potential. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah. I, I thought they, they, they said, we've, we've got this person, he's come from a completely he's, different background. Yeah. And he gets a strong introduction, but they does. sort of forget about him they later. They do, yeah. very, and they forget about him very quickly, actually. Yeah. He's, 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 he's most shoved aside, isn't he? The first story. <laughs> okay. But he has a nice, uh, Dawn Dean Lawrence has a nice kind of easygoing, kind of likeable scamp sort of um, uh, personality. And I, I thought it was an enormous shame that they, they sidelined him. Yeah. I think probably... Uh, Stephen had had his day by then, yeah, and and they'd done all they could with him, but they they could have gone a lot further with Tyso and developed okay. him. Um, yeah, I mean that is completely off the top of my head. Yeah, no, I, had, no, no, I, I was hadn't just really thought about gut, it. Gut reaction, gut right? reaction. Yeah, I thought some, he was potentially no, 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 very, no, very, very I didn't interesting. Want to... Prime you at all for these? And yeah. I, I had to also just say, um, Roger Price was very good at picking characters from very working class, normal, mm. nor, super normal yeah. backgrounds. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was, again, that was a strength of the show. And you had black characters at a time when, you know, it was still quite rare. Yeah. Um, and it was, yeah, it was, and they could have gone further with that. Okay. Um, okay. Right. And thanks to Nick for that interesting interview we're going to hear more from nick in the next installment yes we are going to do another one well by the way if you can hear purring um going on in the background that's rose cat who's sat behind us hello rose cat Have you let- yes thank you anyway um now we want to talk about john Barron, don't we we do we do because he's one of those actors that keeps on popping up in stuff that we're, watching. that we're watching. So what's the last thing we saw him in? The most recent thing we've seen him in is an episode of the second series of The Rivals of Sherlock Holmes, The Missing QCs. I forget who it's originally written by. Right. We can look that up if but we really want it's, to. Um, yeah. a very... God, that was dark, wasn't it? That, it was that, very that went dark. very strange. It went very strange. Because um, there's, there's two QCs. Yes, there's him and yeah, Jack May. There's him so, and Jack May and they're so, sort of acting... Yes, there's like there's a, there's a opposite there's each a, other. Yeah, there's a fruitiness standoff. <laughs> How fruity can you get? Uh, oh, they were pretty fruity. And Jack yeah. May and John Barron together are rather good. But yeah. John Barron gets 
Well, he sort of disappears halfway through, and he then, he, then he pops up again Talks with a wonderful him. expression on his face, he does. and I don't want to say any more. He does. You right, should watch the episode. Rifles of Sherlock Holmes. It's available from Missing Network. QCs, as with most of this stuff, available on DVD. Network in this case. Yeah. Very odd, but, but worth well watching. worth a listen. And there's some well worth great... a listen. Well worth a watch. Worth well, a watch. Thank you. And there's some great episodes on there as well, apart from that one. I was looking John Barron up, and he was president of Equity from 1978 to 1982, which I didn't know. No, I didn't know that either. He was also vice president um, 77 and 84 to 89. And he also liked fine wine, which I can certainly sympathise with. Mm -hmm. So good on you, John, for that. Anyway, um, obviously he's best known for CJ in uh, Reggie Perrin, um, forever shouting, sit down, Reggie, and then the inevitable... (laughs) Sorry, sorry, CJ, afterwards. <laughs> uh, the other John Barron impression I can do is him um, in Whoops Apocalypse from, okay. when's that, 1982? It must be something yeah, like ri- that. Written by uh, Marshall and Rennick when he's, when he's the deacon, um, the advisor to the American president as played by none other than Barry Morse. Who just, just doesn't know. And the deacon is very much the pair behind the throne, I think, in this. Um, but a lovely line. Oh, that was Rose jumping and knocking stuff over. Thank you, Rose. <laughs> there goes the box for the uh, for the sound recording. Never mind. Thank you, Rose. Bye. She's gone to bed. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, the Deacon. Um, yes, he's he's um, very much more in charge than Barry Morse is as the president. This I think is. there could be a satire on a certain president who was around in 1982 at this point possibly they probably could be yes. uh, but one of my favorite lines is if the if the lord had meant us to be sensible he would never have given us credit cards <laughs> and as you said his accent suddenly goes a bit english towards, yeah, towards the, end. the end i yeah, know i can't i can't do accent but there we go so let's let's have a quick run through what else we've got with him in um the mm. earliest thing's sergeant cork isn't it uh yes that's he, a now he's doing an accent in that isn't he he is he's french i believe or belgian is he? Yeah, it's one or the other. Well, it's, in, it's set in France, isn't it? Yeah, but it? I, I'm sure they mentioned in the episode that he's, he's, Ooh, I can't he's remember. a Belgian. But, but that, it doesn't matter. It's all sort of... Yes, yeah, so that's some Sergeant Cork. What's the episode title? It's Something the about a pearl, Case isn't of it? the Great Pearl Robbery. The Great, <laughs> the great Pearl. I've just imagined a huge pearl. And the Great Pearl Robbery. Yeah, and that's from and about, about 1964. two or three scenes where... Um, who's who's the guy playing the, the sergeant? Or William whatever. Gaunt's. Not the sergeant, because that's Sergeant Cork. William Gaunt, William Gaunt is the detective gets to go to Paris for a bit. And no, he, he doesn't actually get to go to Paris. Well, he no, goes to a studio. studio. Uh, he goes, well, he goes to another corner of the studio, yeah, another bit of the which studio. is pretending to be Paris. Um, and John Barron is playing opposite Roger Delgado, he is. who's, Roger Delgado like, is who's a being French a French policeman. policeman. So he's on the right side of the law for once. So he's doing an accent as well. He is. I mean, there's a few things we've got in our collection with John Barron in that we haven't actually seen yet there's quite a few things um, Out of the Unknown does that does that it one exist? exists yeah, it's from 1965 Out of the Unknown the Midas Plague yeah The Avengers A Sense of History yeah um, which is in a huge pile of DVDs I can't remember what that one is um, no doubt an Avengers expert will be able to tell me I must have probably seen it at some point but uh, six, that's from 1966 and also we've got obviously Time Slip which we've recently got yeah um well, it's only just recently come out on dvd so yeah. yeah one thing whilst looking him up we were somewhat surprised to discover and if you look on our twitter feed there's a there's a frame of the sort of end credits he's a he's in three episodes of the beverly hillbillies would you believe as a chauffeur uh, as the clampets go to london for three so episodes it was three, yeah yeah I've never uh, seen the series, so I can't really talk about it. And uh, it appears to have been one of these series that has been colourised after the event, so that was one of the reasons I didn't really want to watch it, because right. it looks fairly dire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it'll look much better in black and white, to be honest. But um, hmm. So, yes, yeah, so Sergeant Cork is what we've seen um, him in. We've also got... What else have we got? Uh, oh, his Ace of Wands appearance is missing, sadly. Mm. Uh, the smile from 1970. But he is in the mind of Mr. J.G. Reader, one of our favourite series yes. um, of recent yes. years. Mm-hmm. 
The Earl of Colebrook in Find the Lady. I think uh, I remember that one. And I'm going to have to remind myself what that one's about. Okay, but um, I think it's something to do with missing... Oh, Debut- missing debutantes. debutantes, that's right. And, Mr. And a Chinese magician Reader uncovers a dastardly traffic in white slavery. <laughs> oh, David Collings is in that as well. And Windsor Davies and mm. like Lots loads of people. Of people. Uh, Mind of Mr. J.G. Reader. Get it. Absolutely brilliant. Mm. Um, one of his sort of biggest things, though, is All Gas and Gators as the yep. dean. Yeah, and we, which we, we sort of discovered by accident. Yeah, is that one of those series we just sort of took a punt on and yes. and we absolutely we loved it. Loved it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Weirdly, as the Dean, he's in series one and four. Um, and the missing episodes are mostly from series two and three, where the Dean is played by... Ern- um, what's his name? Ernest, Ernest, Clark, Ernest Clark. Who plays Professor Loftus, Loftus in the in television the Doctor series. Doctor series. And um, he's wonderful. Yeah. But yeah, he's, he's a, all his appearances that uh, we've got are of, of, of John Barron. Yes. Uh, also married to. In, we, the, in the series. In the series. Um, Mrs. Richards, no less. From Forty Towers. What's her real name? Joan Sanderson. Thank you. Also known for Police, sir. Yeah. And after Henry. Uh, do watch, obviously, as the minister. And he has... He's drunk. Dr. Quist is drunk. Oh, that's three impressions I can do of him. Yes, OK. Well, actually, I can say the words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, and he's by far the most reoccurring he's minister. He's got the, he's got about 12, well, quite a few episodes. Um, Hamilton Dice is in one, and John Sabadant is uh, also in one. Uh, so, but he doesn't have a posset. <laughs> you have to be a Doctor Who fan to get that joke. He's uh, also in a couple of episodes of Yes Minister stroke Yes Prime Minister as uh, Sir Ian Whitworth, the uh, secretary to the DHSS SSSS. That's a lot. That's a lot of S's. I've been enjoying some fine wine. You see, much like a much like the man himself. But yes, the thing we will go into more detail of in a few minutes it, oh uh digression we did find an appearance for him credited in an alice in wonderland from 1985 oh and, god that's weird oh and we thought we we thought it was the terence dicks barry let's production but, but it's, it's not. not it's an anglia production from and a year before it's got lots of puppets he's, in it. he's the caterpillar but he's a puppet he's a puppet caterpillar so he's a voice yeah um and it's a bit weird and it looks a bit weird and i got a bit scared and i didn't want to watch anymore but but, but <laughs> just to say it's not as scary as the W.C. Fields version. Oh, W.C. Fields is um, as, as Humpty Dumpty, Dumpty from 1930-ish. Yeah, really that is really weird. damn weird. Yeah. Look that up. That's knocking around as well. Mm. But yeah, um, Crank Court is the thing that we are going to go into more detail. Yeah. He's the... What is he? He's, oh, I was say, he's not a reverend. He's the Honourable Mis- Mr. Justice Michener. Michener or, or the Honourable Mr. Justice Michener, depending on what the credit what the credits say. Is. Or as we know him as? Judge yeah. Piles. Judge Caesar. <laughs> oh, ju- no, I was going to say Judge Piles, because I think he's got Piles. Well, you, yeah, I think he's there's, got Piles there's too. A, there's but... a story where they're talking about a rubber ring, and he goes, a rubber ring? What would that be used for? Um, mm. To alleviate um, discomfort. And then he does this weird sort, sort of, of shifting quirk, quirking movement, and yeah. as though he's got something, as though he's yeah. finding sitting painful. But mm-hmm. nicely, um, sort of linking up with all gas and gators, he's a judge. Yes. Uh, and so is Willie Mervyn. Who plays the bishop. Yeah. In so all gas and gators. two of the main cast of all gas and gators also yeah. end up as yeah. judges yeah. in Crown Court. Yeah. Don't Nemo doesn't seem to get a look I was going to say, I was going to say, Judge, judge Nemo. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Doesn't really. No. no. He's, more, he's, he's probably better suited he's, he's to playing. Off, he's e- off being a monk. Yeah. Probably Annoyingly. at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have to say, of all gas and gators. When it comes to Nimmo series, it's, that's it's by best. far the best. Yeah. We actually bailed out our old brother, didn't we? We did. Yeah, we've we did. never even it's, attempted to no, go farther. It's, it's Sorry. just awful. Mm. But yeah, um, what else have we got? Anything that we've missed out? I think we've uh, done most of them. I think so. No, it's, um... Let's have a look. Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about... Um, Crown Court in a few minutes. Oh, I would just point out, though we've not seen it, probably because most of it doesn't Oh, exist. Softly Softly. He's in 52 episodes of Softly Softly. But we've got Softly Softly Task Force, yeah, which is the later version, one. But yeah. This is the 60s version of Softly Softly. That softly Softly, there's an awful Zed lot Cars. missing, I think, isn't there? Yeah, so. well, there's an awful lot missing from Zed Cars. That's true. 
There's an awful lot missing from lots of BBC Sister <laughs> Sings. Some of which we're talking about at some stage. But there you go, John Barron, uh, one of those really, really reliable actors. Yeah, turns out gives a appeared good in so much that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a shame. I think people just think of him as CJ because yeah. he, yeah. you know, he did so much he more more than well. that. I mean, yeah. CJ is yeah. is wonderful, but mm. you know, this this list of his appearance goes on forever and ever and ever. Um, so yeah, if you can search out some John Barron stuff, I don't think you'll be disappointed. No, right. What so are we going to talk about now? Um, uh, you wanted to do some more comedy, didn't you? Yes. Tell yes. you what, let's watch that till death us do part again, okay. and then we'll we'll come back and. Natter about that, we'll shall we? We'll talk about that, yes. Okay, uh, see you later. Bye bye. Right, so we've just uh, watched the remake of Till Death Us Do Part. A Woman's Place is in the Home, originally broadcast 30th of January 1967. So it's older than you. Some things are older than me, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> not many. There, there are some things. Um, so all that survives of that is the copy of the, the script, obviously, and there is an audio recording of it, uh, which I so will I believe. get round to listening at some point. We didn't want to listen to it now because we just mm. want to talk about the, the, the remake. The remake, the one-off mm. stage play. I mean, I'm probably more familiar with Till Death than, than you are. No, no, I, I did watch it when I was a kid. Um, whether it or, or, must have or, been the 80s. I was going to say, you, you, you've seen In, in Sickness and yeah. in Health. In Sickness and In Health more, but I must have seen Till Death as do part. Because we have so. got one series of Till Death, and that will be, what is it, the 1973 series? Or was it the 1972? I'm not sure. Series. No, there isn't a 1970. Ah, 1974 series. So that includes uh, Strikes and Blackouts. Um, that's the one where they play, start with them playing Monopoly. And, oh, right, with the beach. And Elsa's got the... <laughs> I love that bit. It's the, uh, it's, the, it's the matchbox. What have you got in the matchbox? Bees. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> I want them to sting my rheumatism, you bloody idiot. Where, how do they know where your rheumatism is? <laughs> and so on and so on. <laughs> But let's talk about the the episode. So yeah, it's it's an interesting I'll concept. I'll hand over to you for a bit now. Um, you can, you the can have a way it's filmed, it's very obviously filmed like a stage play, because although you've got the garnet sitting room, the walls are see through, so you can see people coming in and out of the house. I know you said to me that some people complained that the living room was wasn't wrong. the same as, well, obviously as it's it not, was on television. It's not going to be the same anyway because A, it's a different production. Yeah. It's got different people involved. And they're not going to do a perfect recreation of the sitting room. Certainly not on a BBC4 budget. Well, that's the thing. The BBC1 hmm. remakes and re, you know, I mean, you jigs would... obviously have about ten times the budget of the BBC4 well, stuff. Well, you would hope they so. gave everything the same budget despite the fact it's going to be shown on BBC4. I, I don't, I I don't think BBC4 somehow. would have... It's yeah. had anywhere near the budget of the BBC so, one but, and, and it's interesting I would like just to say talk about that, that the fact that they felt that they have to put the lost sitcom series season onto BBC 4 mm. why not put it on BBC 2 or BBC 1 because these things were all originally shown on BBC 2 or BBC 1 what, what I thought so was interesting is that the, more niche. the opening shot you could see the audience and yeah. where all the lights and the cameras it were it was, it was a shot of, of what the stage looked like. Yeah. I suspect the cameras were a bit further away than they would have been in the TV production because you didn't get many really big close-ups close -ups of people's no. faces. You, you got no. more wider, you did wider shots. Wider shots. Um, but, yeah, so it was. Certainly... I don't know what studio it would have been in originally. Uh, whether, mm. whether it were in TV Centre or what, I don't know. Or, oh, don't, don't know. Or Riverside no. or Lime Grove. It's more likely to be Riverside or if Lime Grove. If it was sixty-seven, yeah. Yeah, I'm not very good Yeah, I'm not very good on studios. Yeah, yeah. Um, how it would all be laid out. And, uh, but yeah, it, and as I said, it's certainly an interesting um, idea. It's got interesting performances. What, um, what do you think of si Simon Day? I like Simon Day. He's possibly not got the anger that Warren Mitchell's version of Alf Garnet has. I almost thought he was sort of holding it back a bit. Though. Yeah, yeah. That. Not going too far with it. 
Yeah, because yeah. I mean, it's, it's as I said. I mean, we said we said this before with um, you know, um, are you being served that it's interesting to see somebody else's the take on the character, yeah. and obviously, yeah. everybody's version of a character will be slightly different yeah it's there's no point give, doing it again if you're going to just play it the same way the first mm. first way it was played and p- possibly consciously because he would have seen warren mitchell do it when he was mm. growing up he might have shied away from doing it in the same way but it's it's quite weird that you can when you watch it and listen to it you can see the pattern of the way that alf speaks yeah a lot of the performance of it is actually in the script. Yeah. It's not but they're, they're in the written as, as, as different characters, aren't they? It's yes. not, you know, it's, yeah. they don't all quite have the same speech patterns and rhythms. No. Um, well, they're not written as different characters because it's Johnny Spate's script. Yeah, yeah. They're just played as different characters. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it is Johnny Spate's original script without any changes. And it is noticeable that they've picked a script that has no racist insults. Yeah. In I mean, lo- looking all. back through the list of um, what what is missing, and it's it's there's a lot from series series one and two, especially which are missing. Oh, um, that reminds me, the you had a little mini documentary at the end, didn't you? You did, um, you did. Just talking about attitudes, and you had what was it, Adil Ray and Trix Worrell talking about yeah. how they yeah. enjoyed it. I thought that was funny because you were saying about there were complaints about how the set was different. Yes. And uh, Adil Ray, I think, had that for Mr. Khan, didn't he? Did. he? That yeah, people that... complain that yeah. between series one and series two of Mr. Khan, it suddenly got bigger. The, the living room had suddenly changed, and there was mm. an extra door. Yeah. So you know, that... well, maybe just put an extra door in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you you know, as productions change, of course, the set changes. Mm, you you know. know, it's it's. But but on that documentary, you also got a couple of tiny clips of. And we should mention this, the, the recently discovered episode Intolerance from uh, June 66. And it was only found a few weeks ago as we're, it was. As we're speaking. It was. And um, so they very quickly got... They did have a little bit from it before, right. I think. So perhaps it's um, that. Whether the, the clips they showed, it, I, I have no idea, were from the bits they had before or whether that was from the new yeah. complete print of it. Yeah. Um, don't know. Don't know. But it was interesting to see. Anyway. It's quite exciting that it, yeah. it turned yeah. up or, or was yeah. handed in just very, very recently. So that I think that's the major sort of discovery of this 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 year for, yeah. for me, from yeah. my point of view. Getting a whole episode of of that back. There's you know obviously I mean, been other things. Hopefully we might see it on BBC Four at some in point. As well, but yeah. but yeah, I would. You know, it would be nice now they've got a new black. Well, I say new a. Rediscovered. A rediscovered black and white episode. To see if, it. if that could get a showing at some point. But it's probably going to be the BBC Store route again, isn't it? It probably if is. BBC Store. But that's fine. We can, yeah. we can do BBC Store. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Once I can remember what my password is. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and coming up next week, we have um, Hancock. And it's the new neighbour, and it's the mostly... That's one I don't know at all. Mostly I, I, the cast... I, I thought that, I knew so, my hand got, oh, but, right. Mostly but the that's, cast gonna, that's a very early one again, yeah. isn't it? And it's mostly the cast that did the radio plays. So you have Kevin McNally as Hancock. I was going to say Kevin R. McNally. Only, on, oh, when he's in films. It's only when he's in films, isn't it? I think yeah. he's just Kevin McNally in this. <laughs> and um, uh, John Coleshaw as Sid, and... Robin Sebastian as Kenneth Williams, okay, and with Katie Wicks as Hattie. So I've not, character. I've not heard the the recent productions of it. So this no, will all be quite so new be to me. But apparently, he doesn't play it like Tony Hancock would play it. No. Again, you have to give it your own twist. Otherwise, you may as well just look at what well, you can't look at because I think it's missing. But you must just listen to the original. Yeah, you know. because yeah. uh, Hancock is the only one that exists that's Kenneth Williams. That's the, um, Alpine, that's the holiday. Alpine holiday. Yeah. yeah, I'm your new, I'm your, I'm your roommate. No, you're not. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. And of course, the week after that, uh, we have Steptoe and Son, Yay. and this and it is an existing Looking episode. Looking forward to that. Yeah, it is an existing episode. All of Steptoe exists but in varying quality. As it'll said, be interesting but... to see how different actors do do, do the do, parts. Yeah. Because I have to say, because the BBC recently did, which they now don't show because of. 
various reasons, but they did the thing on the, the actors of um, in Steptoe and Son. A lot of the time, I can only see Phil Davis as Steptoe. <laughs> now, Phil because... Davis should be Wurzel Gummidge. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. But... If you ever do Wurzel Gummidge again, Phil Davis we're is We're wandering my... off the subject here. Are we? This no, is, we're talking this... about telly. This yeah, is no, but we're British talking... telly all over the place. Right. But uh, yes, okay, so, but, so and, that that was a, that was pretty much a hit for you, I think. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. it was, and I'm not sure. Maybe I would quite like to see some more, but mm. it was yeah. interesting as a one-off. Yeah, um, and it is available on DVD from the 19th of September. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've already pre-ordered it. Aha, of course. Mm. Right, I think that's that for that one. And uh, coming up now is yes. Crown Court. <laughs> Uh, how did we discover Crown Court? We discovered Crown Court because I asked you to buy me for my 40th birthday four years ago um, something from the year I was born, which would be 1972. So you looked up on the internet and you got me Dixon of Dot Green. Yes, which we eventually grew to love, but proved a bit uh, hard going to start with because it was all a bit. Um, Grim. Grim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ones from 1972 are all a bit depressing. Yeah, well, the ones that exist, yeah. anyway. And also Crown Court. And out of the two, we thought, oh, we're probably going to like Dixon more because, you know, it's BBC and it's it's it's, it's cosy. It's not cosy. Uh, but So we watched that and then we stuck a Crown Court on and we absolutely loved it. And we kept on sticking and Crown Court on. And we kept sticking on. Crown Court on. And we're now up to volume Eight. eight. Um, I think we got the second and third volumes because you found out that John Le Maitre was in one of them. Mm-hmm. So obviously, then it became an absolute must buy that one. Um, so that was it, really. That's how we got into it, and probably we saw it. Well, I saw it. I don't know if you saw it. I don't know if you were. A, we watched ITV, but we were a bit of an ITV family. <laughs> um, I probably saw it when I was a child and off school or. Well, it was on at one thirty yeah, so weekdays. You'd, you'd only see it if you were off sick. Wednesdays, really. Thursdays and Fridays. And as a kid, it would come on and you think, oh, this is going to be boring and turn it off. Yeah. It's only as an adult coming back to it you realize, that you realise it's absolutely stuffed full of brilliant actors. It is. Brilliant writers, brilliant actors. And the actual range of stories it and styles it tells it's a, it's are amazing. surprisingly for what is yeah. pretty much production line television, television yeah. Yeah, um, shot in very quick turnaround it, it has must to be have been, yeah. um you've got an awful lot of great stuff going on frankly there's yeah. there's mm-hmm. ones that are very very serious where well, there's ones that yeah. are comedy yeah. there's even a surrealist one by nf simpson um which we've never made it to the end of oh well, I th- i'm trying to think oh, of what well. I think I, I did. But, I, I yeah. haven't. I but think I did the first that's episode. That's very, very strange bit of television yes. and wonderful I because of it. <laughs> but mm. the one we're going to look at today is How to Rob a Memory Bank. Yeah, which was shown when was at one thirty from the 26th to the 28th of June, 1974. 1974, they said in unison. Cast list is John Barron, as mentioned before, as uh, Mr. Justice Michener. Judge mm. CJ. You've got William Simons and Jonathan Elsom as the uh, QCs. Yeah. William uh, Simons is defence. Uh, Jonathan Elsom is prosecution. prosecution. Uh, the actual defendant is played by Jack Shepard. And you've got witnesses such as Dennis Chinnery and Clifford Rose. Um, doing an accent? Doing some sort of accent. Some sort of accent. I don't know quite what we it is. We pinned it down to in the north somewhere. <laughs> Possibly Yorkshire. But the whole premise, which remarkably for 1974, is all about computer fraud. It is. Um, It is about computer fraud. One day, the security office of UK King Packaging Company discovered that £125,000 and 58 new pence had found its way into the firm's from the firm's computer accounting system into a bank account opened by Mr Warren. But how did he do it? He wasn't a gun-toting smash-and-grab raider, nor was he a thermal lance lance or gelignite expert, but he still managed to rob a bank, a computer memory bank. That's a direct quote from the uh, TV Times listings. Oh, I would point out that it's the other way round. It's the other way round. I I read the paragraphs the other way round. But yeah, we managed to track down the uh, listings for for TV Times. There's also a rather nice, silly little graphic for episode two of a judge and some 
I presume jurors. It's a load of like faceless yeah. people shaped. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, there's a lovely little site to do with uh, TV Times listings that we found this on. Um, but yes, as I said, for 1974, computers, of course, in those days, um, run off of things like punch cards. And I used punch cards at school in about 1980. Um, I never used punch cards. You never use. Well, you're slightly. I was going to say you're slightly newer than me, aren't you? I am slightly newer than <laughs> me. Slightly more freshly minted. Oh, really? If you say so. Um, <laughs> but let's talk about the actual production of it. Um, right. The whole thing basically takes place in one, one set, set, one four-walled set. Yeah, with a little bit of corridor outside. Yeah, tiny, tiny, tiny little, little corridor, corridor outside. Um, but it's a multi-camera studio yeah. set up and mm. some very very clever and inventive camera work yeah yeah sometimes the cameras sh- move in they're where you shooting don't think all over the set yeah. and yeah. only very very rarely do you actually have a shot where you see a bit of camera rapidly yeah. retreating, retreating out of, shot. out of shots yeah. <laughs> yeah obviously didn't have time to stop and go back yes uh but it's that multi-camera studio setup that i absolutely love about old british telly um i just it it just gives the actors a chance to to have a bit more control over where yeah. the scene is going. Yeah. I mean, these days, of course, it's all single camera stuff shot like a film. Mm. Um, but in those days, it was sophisticated stage plays, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which does rely on your actors being very good. Yes. Because if it. your actors can't deal with that environment, you yeah. haven't really got a show. No. And I don't think I've ever seen an episode of Crown Court where the actors aren't bang on. No. Um, and there's another one which we will talk, another scene which we will talk about in a little while involving um, Mary Wimbush, who many of you may oh, know yes. from... Yes, Mary Wimbush um, is one. Is, uh... Canine and Company and Jeeves and Worcester. Yes, she's, she's appearing with uh, Ian Martyr. I suppose she, we should um, get say about sort of, if you like your Doctor Who actors, yeah, there's you'll find a lot of awful lot of people yeah. in there. You've got Ian Martyr as a... He um, appears twice as a policeman. Oh yes, he's a policeman he's and he's a victim he's, of a and crime. He's a sort of semi regular, he's a, he's a semi regular QC for a well. bit. Um, there's uh, who else have we got? Um, well, William Mervyn. Well, we, yes, in, I was going to say. Even though yeah. he's only a guest actor in Doctor yes. Who, he's in one. I was thinking, I was thinking, companions. You've got um, Wendy Padbury's in. Oh, Wendy Padbury's in one. In one about schoolgirls looking unconvincingly <laughs> as a schoolgirl. <laughs> It's like the older in the school yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, it does. Um, Caroline John do one as well. Yeah, well I, I don't think we've seen that one. Yeah, it's, we have got it. It's a murder uh, one, and we tend to leave the murder ones, especially if they involve children. Cause they yeah, tend to some of them grim. are quite grim, it has to be said. For half yeah. half one on uh, the afternoon, yeah. some of them are really quite <laughs> depressing. Yeah. Um, oh, speaking of uh, computers from the from nineteen eighty. Um, Silly little story. I remember when we were doing the sort of punch card stuff at school, we did actually get a day out to a computer centre at Bournemouth. Oh, right, OK. Just up the road from where we're oddly living now. Yeah. And our teacher took us to this um, sort of place where this huge computer was. It had like mm. sort of 48K memory or something. Wow. Like, absolutely massive. And there's all these little terminals dotted around the room and we all <laughs> sat at one and I was sort of typing away doing something. I can't quite remember what. And all of a sudden, the message came up on the com- on the computer screen. Andrew, your shirt is hanging out. That's not unusual for you. And I thought that's a very clever computer if it knows that. <laughs> but I think it was just my teacher sending me a, a, me- a silly message. But uh... <laughs> but yeah, the the setup for this story is that uh, Mr. Samuel Warren is is working at this firm where they've just got this new computer system, yeah. and he's very concerned about computer but security. He is, yes. Yes. And no, nobody it, will listen to his warnings. So no. basically, he sets it up so the computer regularly makes payments to his bank account. Yeah. Oh, we should say, yes, yes, yeah. carry on. Um, and the idea was that once he reached £150,000, mm. um, he was going to present a cheque to the mm. um, sort of owner of the company just to mm. prove how rubbish the computer security <laughs> was on their system i would say that's his defense that is what he alleges happened yes because the, the idea prosecution it... alleges that he was just going to steal the money yes yeah because he says um i had a checkbook and i wasn't going to use it 
I, I tore it up. Um, the, the defence being that if you didn't actually spend the money, then no crime had been committed. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the uh, the guy says uh, that the his bosses are a very good example of what's known as the Peter Principle. Yes. Um, to explain that, in any organisation where promotion depends upon your ability to do the job, um, your competency, you keep on getting promoted until eventually you reach a point at which you're, you reach a job level at which you are actually incompetent because then you don't get promoted anymore. So uh, um, on a totally unrelated note, it's interesting to note that this... Uh, story was produced by Jonathan Powell who I think is generally considered to be a very competent uh, producer. I think he probably is. Yeah, yeah. and uh, later on he was then promoted to be head of series and serials at the BBC and then later was promoted again when he became controller of BBC One. Didn't he do El, El Dorado under his watch? Uh, hmm. I'm not sure. Was that him or was that Michael Grade? No, that was Jonathan Powell. Okay, well, I'll take your yeah. word for it. But as I said, the the Peter Principle, an interesting theory. I'm sure it doesn't really apply in real life to anybody that we could mention. But no, I'm sure it doesn't. There right. we go. What else have we got? Um, oh, uh, Crancourt is set in Fulchester, isn't it? Is it is set in Fulchester. Uh, anybody yes. that reads a uh, Viz comic will know that most of the strips in, in Viz are actually set in Fulchester as well. Is it? They um, are. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the world of, what, the town of... Fulchester. Fulchester must be massive, it's though. It's huge, because it's got everything. It's got countryside, it's got a marina, it's got everything. All, all, these, race, all, all, a, these, all these companies, dog dog, all the course. dog track, yes. Um, it's one of these things that the longer the series goes on the for... The bigger it gets. And I'd love to see somebody trying to do an online map of... I, I really don't think you could of, do Fulch that. of everything that's in Fulchester. It must be about the size of London. Uh, but, yes, what... Uh, what else do we have? i um, got some notes here. Uh, what do you want to say? We should just say as well that um, obviously Crankle is an, a series that was shown on ITV. So it has an advert break. Oh, yes. So you get a little cliffhanger every ad uh, for the advert break. And then when you come back, it's not usually resolved. It's, you know, they normally... But it's, you know, it's just, just a little a leading question or an awkward awkward question to whoever's on the stand at that particular moment um you get a, a bit of a cliffhanger at the end of each episode and i've, I've noted down here that um there's a bit of an odd episode ending to episode two and i can't remember what that is now but uh, the, when we watched it it struck me that it was a weird oh, place uh, to stop it, it, they're, they're asking um the defendant but you are not opposed to computers in principle yeah Trying to sort of lead him to say, no, yeah. I'm not. But all he does is sort of pull a bit of a face and look yeah. thoughtful. And look thoughtful, yeah. yeah. Oh, s s talking about the end of part one, part two thing, we have to say that highly unusually, the um, episode title, the writer credit, the end of part one caption and the part two credit, though sadly not the, not the uh, end credits, not the end credits themselves, yeah. were all done in um, a special computery like font which yes. several people on online have told us is uh, data 70 apparently and it's it's not too dissimilar to the font that's used in the original anyway not too no, dissimilar no but it's that sort of 70s computery yeah. font computer it does font it does, it does get like. used in the goodies on a couple of occasions when they're doing sort of stuff that's yeah. meant to be sort of fu futuristic or computery yeah. uh, but it's, yeah, it's just a shame they couldn't do the end credits in that font as well. Well, I don't think you'd be able to read it, would you, after no. a while? No, maybe not. But, uh, but yeah, all in all, I think uh, it's uh, one of the more unusual episodes. Yeah, it uh, is. Stories, rather, it is. not it, episodes. It has some very interesting performances. Mm -hmm. um, not least I didn't really know Jack Shepard. No, but, no. Um, Jack Shepard is primarily known in this country, if he's really known at all. Um, he starred in uh, Bill Brand, which is in the set, which was made in the seventies, and he's a he's a newly elected Labour MP, and I'm sure there are lots of parallels with what's going on currently in the country. Ooh, a little bit of politics, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. My name's Lisa Parker. Good night. <laughs> and he's mostly known in this country, I think, for 
Wycliffe or Wycliffe, I'm Wycliffe, not sure how Wycliffe, you pronounce it, you say, I don't know. where he's a policeman in Cornwall and I have to say, and I'm very sorry to all involved, it has to be the dullest police series I've ever seen. <laughs> That's saying a lot. Yes. We watch an awful lot of police series. We do series. watch a lot of police series and it's, I've never actually made it through a whole episode. Oh I tend to watch bits and go, yeah, this this just dull, I'm going to turn it <laughs> over. But he's a very good actor. Um, by this point, he'd been acting for about 10 years. I was going to say, he's been around, hasn't yeah, he? But, yeah, it's um... not, he's, he'd never had huge roles, but he's, you know, he's been a, a supporting actor. He's, he's not one of those actors. He's probably one of those actors that you've seen in stuff. And you get you sort of think, oh, I know his face. <laughs> but you don't know him for anything in particular. No, I, I, I didn't really know him. But, uh... um, and but he... it's just a damn good performance it's a very isn't it? good because i remember you saying it was a bit like sort of it's like he's wandered in from a play for today or yeah, something it's, it's it's he's he's really he imbibes the character with a sense of but i'm bearing in mind this is in 1974 and people weren't diagnosed as being things mm. like autistic because he's actually uh i think his qualification is in mathematics isn't yeah. it the actual character yeah. and, and uh, he's very intense and he gives this extraordinary performance that could have very easily tipped over into parody. Because he starts off with a sort of... He's very, very quiet. Yeah. And then he's got and, a sort of a nervous, nervous, nervous he cough. Coughs. Yeah. Yeah. And then suddenly, yeah. when he sort of settles into what yeah. where and, he is, he suddenly becomes pushed. a lot more animated. He does. Yeah. He does. And it, it's, it's the most extraordinary performance mm. It really is. But yeah, as I said, bear in mind this was a this this is the sort of show that was just churn it out and yeah. get on to the next one. Yeah. Um but yeah. you know, performance wise this is this is remarkably good for that sort of turnaround. It is. That that sort of show. It is. Yeah. I mean we've got what vol eight volumes of the show. Well we've now. got all the volumes are out. Each volume's so four four discs. Yeah. Each disc is three, three stories. stories and, and each... each story is generally not yeah. always, but generally three episodes. So yes. that's an awful lot of crown court we've yeah. got. Twenty five minute episodes. And we're we're only about halfway through nineteen seventy four. Yeah, we're only <laughs> two years into it. And it goes on to like the early eighties. It does go on to the early eighties because a certain Mr. Peter Capaldi. I was going to say that there is an the infamous 80s. Peter Capaldi clip when he's got red hair as some sort of yeah. punk rocker and, or and something. Chewing gum. Yeah, which is made to spit out by the judge. So there's so much crown court we haven't is, seen yet, it and it's unfortunately the the rate it takes. Um, you get about one e one a year, it, don't you? One, one a year or one every other year. Yeah. So we'll be very very old by the time we get <laughs> anywhere near that. Um, going back to what we said earlier about Mary Wimbush, we should actually um, explain about that. To oh, this mention. one's where they, it's to do with like betting on betting the dogs or, or the on dog the dog, track. Dog. Yeah. and she's got this yeah. amazing. And she's, she's in charge of the toll booths. Speech which is, about sort of probabilities, yes, and, and things odds like and things, and she reels it out. It goes on for about a full minute from, of speech, yeah, and it, she reels it out in what uh, looks like one take. Yeah, and Ian Martyr, they cut to Ian Martyr, and he's just utterly stunned he at this, looks isn't it? Stunned and absolutely terrified because <laughs> the judge is saying, "Would you like to ask you ask a question, Mister Ingrams?" And then bang into yeah, the yeah. into the end of part one credit. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a very very clever piece of, piece of, of acting and a very clever piece of editing of editing which yeah. leads to comedy you know yeah. just just his reaction yes yeah, there are an awful lot of good stories there is there is one story um uh, i can't remember it's, i know it's got persimmons in there oh Tigers persimmons and, and dishwashers, and, dishwashers. It's, it's, it's a and we actually we we it, we got the giggles in that story and had to stop it to look because they kept on up. saying the word persimmon yeah and we, we, we in increasingly sure. silly voices yes, and we weren't sure if persimmons were actually a real fruit or not but they are they are a real we fruit. tried we tried persimmons we tried them didn't like and them they're not very nice to be honest they probably are we probably didn't let them eat that them ripen what are they also known as uh sharon fruit sharon fruit if you're i think they're yeah. probably more known oh there's a picture of some persimmons yeah, yeah. They're sort of orange and and, and but um, yes, to have an, have an like. episode titled "Persimmons and Dishwashers" mm. is uh, yeah, it's all about gangsters and things. Oh, that's the one where they say um, he fell down the stairs, my lad, yeah. or something, and then we don't believe this is what happened. Why not? He lives in a bungalow. It's yeah. that, that old silly joke. Yeah, but yes, it, it's it's one of the more light-hearted hearted ones, considering the. Yeah. Uh, they have to throw a light-hearted right, one every so matter. often because some of them are, are truly very grim. Here we are, persimmons and dishwashers. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm not sure that I think you need to go to IMDb. IMDb, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So, Persimmons and dishwashers. But... Crown Court, Persimmons and dishwashers. There we go. Yeah. Fulchester's notorious curl brothers are mm. accused of demanding money with menaces and GBH. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, it's all yes, it's uh, Cause there's, who's in there? There's oh somebody God, in there. Uh, one there? of the brothers' own enforcers has disappeared and is believed to have been buried under the new M16 motorway foundations. <laughs> oh dear, yes, it's uh, very, 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 very silly. Because um, I think there's, a, there's also a story, isn't there a story uh, with Robert Powell in as Powell in as some sort of singer religious singer or something well, i think he may be loosely goodness based knows. on cliff richard goodness knows i mean there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's an awful so lot of, of really famous people um and we did once ask the late sam kelly who who hadn't realized that oh that's right we, it yeah. was out the yeah, there's, were there's, out. He, he just appears at the start he appears at the start of one episode and it was directed by a director called Wojtek. possibly Wojtek, of Wojtek. as he's um and we Polish. We, we yes, we found this increasingly amusing every time we saw it because we kept thinking Medibot. Yeah, yeah, director credit directed by Wojciech. Yeah. That's all it says. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, if you know Medibot from uh, Look Around You Too. Yeah. It become Yeah, quite so it's, it's very very silly. But there we go. That's it. But yeah, Crown Court, that's our uh, recommended show of this, is the, is the, of uh, this uh, podcast. Yeah, T V show um, of this podcast. You maybe think, why would I want to watch Crown Court? But give it a go and well, look episode up on on youtube and i can almost guarantee Ooh, yes there are lots of episodes naughtily available on youtube we, we but I, I will guarantee that you want to buy the, but DVD buy the dvds afterwards. because that's much yeah. more uh, it's a better way of seeing it anyway better quality, better quality and, and, yeah. and you get a few pennies to network and, and it might might encourage a few more people you know releases to releases. come out yes please release some more a bit quicker there you go mm. crown court yeah very good very good mm. okay thank you bye Well, all that remains is an urgent message for Narcissusly Strange. Hello, Mr. Strange. Could you please return our copy of Pardon My Genie Series 1 as soon as possible, as our table leg is all wobbly without it? Cheerio! See you next time. That was Round the Archives. Starring Lisa Parker and Andrew Trobish with Nick Goodman. On the musical side, you heard Dan Tate and Paul Chandler. The script for Crown Court, How to Rob a Memory Bank, was by Julian Roach. And the producer was Jonathan Powell.